Hello, welcome back. This is Calculus by Dr. Oz. Today we're going to convert the polar equation, the given polar equation, to rectangular form and sketch its graph. And the rectangular form is the form that we're used to from Calc 1. So that's either y equals f of x type representation or uh, x equals g of y type representation. Uh, we are also given the implicit description of the function. Uh, these are the three different kinds that we worked out in, in Calc 1, but this time we had the polar representation. That means we're in the polar uh, coordinates. So what we're going to do next is to uh, convert each polar equation uh, to the rectangular form by using uh, this relationship here. So, um, so essentially x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta is going to immensely help us. And time to time you may also refer back to tan uh, theta equals y over x or r squared equals x squared plus y squared. These are, uh, in fact, think about all of those four uh, uh, equations to be used along the way, whichever one uh, is, is more applicable. Um, and also, uh, I want to show you what kind of graphs we have. So, uh, in the first part of the problem, we had like 5 uh, cosine theta, r equals 5 cosine theta. That, in fact, defines a circle, which is pretty much unexpected, right? Because we know the uh, classical form or rectangular equation form of the circle, but just 5 cosine theta uh, is taking us to... Uh, to the graph of a circle. And also, let me just show you the second one again without giving you much heads up. This is also r equals cotan uh, theta cosecant theta that defines a parabola, which is also pretty much unexpected. Uh, so anyway, uh, th th these are two like uh, short uh, uh, views of uh, two graphs and, and let's get started. All right, let's take care uh, of part A. We are given r equals 5 cosine uh, theta, and that's the equation written in the polar form. And we want to go back to the uh, rectangular form, and eventually we're going to sketch its graph, okay? So um, let's start with uh, bringing up this table here that uh, x and y uh, are defined by r cosine theta and r sine theta, and, and if you have uh, y over x, y over x is in fact tangent theta if you want to go back to uh, rectangular to polar, to polar, okay, so here r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So we're going to sort of like make use of these conversions and try to get back to uh, the rectangular formulation here, okay. So I have r equals 5 cosine theta, and if I had an r in front of uh, cosine, I would have that to be equal to x, okay, because we have again x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, okay. So now I'm going to algebraically manipulate the equation. I'm going to multiply both sides by r, okay, so that r squared is 5r cosine theta, and in fact, I know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared, okay. So now I can replace r squared by x squared plus y squared. And r cosine is just uh, x, so that's equal to 5x. Okay? So let's keep all in one side of the equation. Subtracting 5x from both sides, you have x squared minus 5x plus y squared equals 0. And what I can do is like well, I can put this uh, in one of the standard forms of conic sections. And to do that, we have to complete this part, uh, the square, okay? So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to get the half of that added to, uh, added to uh, x, okay? And I'm going to take the quantity of the power of that, and I'm going to compensate that by the square of this term, which is 25 over 4, okay? This was, uh, this was how uh, the completion of the square was done earlier, okay? All right, so let's so like wrap everything up. You have x minus pi 5 over 2 squared plus y squared, and I'm going to add 25 uh, over 4 to both sides of the equation so that I have 25 over 4 or right here, okay? So... Um, since we're done uh, with uh, all uh, conversion, we can talk about like how or what kind of like conic section this one is. Well, first of all, this is circle, right? Circle, uh, let me just, 
there we go. We have a circle uh, whose center is uh, uh, center is uh, five over two and zero, okay. And the radius is uh, the radical of this number, which is five over two. Okay. So you can go ahead and uh, draw a circle uh, centered at five uh, hells and zero, and with the radius of five hells. Okay. But what I want you to do is also do this in the polar form, uh, like uh, graphing, like r equals five cosine theta. So let me just show you how that how that works. So here's my circle centered at uh, centered at five hells here. Okay, five hells with the radius five hells as well. Okay. And how do you get this graph um, if you want to graph it in the polar form? Okay, let's just sort of like ponder about it a little bit. So we have we have r equals five cosine theta. What you can do here is that you see all the uh, degrees coming along. These are the rays uh, that you can emanate uh, from zero and connect it through. So essentially, for example, this is the ray of uh, theta equals 15 degrees. Let me use a different color, okay? This is theta equals 30 degrees, theta equals 45 degrees, and theta equals 60 degrees. So uh, essentially what you do here is that you, you take those uh, uh, rays, okay? Let me raise the orange ones, okay? You take those rays and, and then you evaluate R at those theta values, okay? Theta R, okay? I'm gonna place in, let's say zero, uh, 15 degrees. I put degrees, but you can almost always go with the radian formulation of that, like pi over uh, 12. Uh, pi over uh, 6, okay, pi over 6, and pi over 4, and pi over 3, and pi over 3, and so on, okay? You can add as many as you can if you want to. And then, next thing is to calculate R. So when you cal calculate R at those, uh, zero, at those uh, theta values, for example, for 0, it's 5 cosine 0, and that's equal to 5, you go ahead and then you walk 5 units out on, on, the, on, the, on the ray. So for example, let me just erase those. Okay, so, so theta equals 0 is this ray here. This ray here, the x-axis in fact. And walking uh, on that 5 units takes you all the way to this point. So you mark this point essentially. Okay. Let's say you go to pi over 6, for example, and 5, five cosine uh, pi over 6 is the value of r. So 5, maybe radical 3 over 2. You, just, you can put it in decimal form, obviously. And then you walk that many units on this ray here to end up being here. Okay? And you do it like for 360 degrees. And when r is negative, for example, then, then you walk in the other direction, okay? For example, uh, let's try this one. Okay, let's say like theta equals 3 pi over 4, okay? And, and when you plug in uh, 3 pi over 4 in r, so what do we get? Let's check. Uh, 5 times cosine 3 pi over 4, cosine... Uh, uh, 3 pi over 4 is negative uh, root 2 over 2. So 5, negative 5, root 2 over 2. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I can't walk in this direction anymore, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a hypothetical expansion of that ray, okay? And I'm going to have this many units, <clears throat> uh, this many units walked in the negative direction. So in other words, I'm walking on this, on this one, and mark this point. Okay, so when you are done with marking enough uh, number of points, then you can just connect all the points, all the marked points, with a continuous curve. And I wanted to explain that in the in this video. Uh, probably I, I won't do that in the next video, but I want you to do it by yourself because it's certain. In in certain cases, we have to uh, hand graph uh, the polar equations, and this is sort of like how you do it. You just take sample. Uh, rays and, and and as you see that for each ray you calculate R and and, and then and then mark those points in the polar form.
All right. All right, this is already a long video. I'm going to stop right here. Uh, please continue to my next video to see what I'm going to do for part B. Uh, bye.